I never planned to be a video artist. It just happened. Like, you know, I was very interested in drawings and then step by step, I wanted to tell a story. I wanted to tell my point of view of the world. You know, I wanted to tell my point of view of contemporary society and history. And I found out that the only way to, uh, to tell a story was to use moving image. And uh, of course, uh, I wanted I want to say things, I want to say my opinion of the war and, and video animation is, and storytelling is the best way to express uh, an opinion. Could you tell us something about the title The Drunken Boat? The Drunken Boat uh, is a famous poem by Arthur Rimbaud and uh, I really like this title because uh, the goal of the exhibition is to try to explain the tumultuous state of uh, uh, American historical narrative. And uh, I like the idea of all of these characters uh, that are sort of like symbol of uh, uh, American uh, historical uh, uh, narrative that somehow they are lost uh, at sea in a raft and somehow explain all of this uh, tumultuous and uh, absurd narrative that uh, is, I think, characterize uh, American history and all of its, uh, um, you know, inconvenience and uh, inaccuracy. In, uh, in this video, we have uh, a series of like founding father, like from George Washington to Benjamin Franklin, uh, but also we have, uh, uh, because this is also like a satire, uh, we have also uh, a Donald Trump dressed uh, as a military uh, leader. Uh, we have, uh, you know, all of these characters that are very grotesque, and very uh, funny, but of course, uh, uh, this video is also uh, a bit dark. So uh, this uh, boat is lost uh, at sea. The sea is kind of like a, uh, a very hellish uh, environment, very expressionist. And, uh, but at the same time, all of these uh, leaders, they're dressed with sunglasses. It's kind of like uh, a very funny, a uh, way to, uh, you know, kill the drama of like, uh, of uh, American history by having a sort of like satirical approach. Uh, what we see here, um, basically the idea was uh, uh, to show to the viewer uh, what's happening behind the scene on a whole of the video animation that I create. So uh, every single video animation uh, is created in, uh, um, using digital technology, in particular gaming engine like Unity. And, you know, for the past 20 years, I've always been exposed to the uh, digital skeleton that uh, they are composing this character, and they actually they are holding the character. So, and after being exposed for so many years, I said, wow, I would love to bring uh, all of these lines that are belonging to the virtual realm I would like to bring it back into the physical space and interpret them and create a series of like drawings that are made of like gouache, uh, ink, and pastels. And the idea was to bring this digital line into the physical world, but at the same time create this sort of like metaverse, uh, uh, pixelized uh, digital atmosphere that just pastel uh, can, can do. This, this two painting they're communicating because on one side we have you know a group of like uh, founding father uh, from again Benjamin Franklin we have uh, uh, George Washington we have Robert E. Lee and we have another founding father and somehow they're mirroring each other because these are the Native American leader they were wiped out by you know, the colonizer and, uh, and uh, the, the, the new nation like America. And we have uh, a character that resembles Montezuma. We have a character that resembles like a, a um, sitting bull, Native American leader. And we have a character that re resembles uh, the Inca leader Pachacuti. My, my dad, uh, they used to have uh, a butcher shop, so I was too exposed uh, to all of this, like, uh, you know, like working class environment and it was very, was very inspiring, to be honest. It was very interesting, very hard, because coming from, uh, you know, not an educated family was not easy, but it uh, gave me a phenomenal motivation to, to pursue an art career, and I know I had this advantage, and this 
long term help me because uh, I think I work so hard to, to get here, you know. Yes, it is. It is because uh, uh, in this video we have uh, uh, a very interesting things that happen. We have uh, a group of native chiefs uh, that they are teaching to the conquistadores. Uh, they are teaching uh, the native dance, and it's such an absurd uh, uh, image that you think about. You see George Washington that is trying to dance uh, uh, a Native American, you know, um, tribe dance. So. And I like the absurdity because, uh, uh, you know, they're smoking cigars together, they're having a great time because they didn't want to show the dark side, they didn't want to show the wars and the blood. I wanted to show, can you imagine how beautiful would be the world if these two civilizations didn't clash, but instead they were having great time, they were learning from each other. It's more about to have uh, a presence in, uh, in society, not just to be an individual that uh, is just sitting there and cannot say anything. Like, you know, through an artworks, I was trying to, to participate in at, uh, at a political discourse and simply try to be alive by showing my opinion, like, you know. The new dimension of your work is the VR. What can she see here? Well, um, she basically is inside of one of my uh, work, pretty much, like, you know. So um, the great things about virtual reality experience is that uh, uh, the viewer is actually participating in a very interactive way of all of my video scenes. In this moment, she's inside uh, an ancient Roman bathhouse and uh, she sees all of these cards that they are very uh, like indulgent. And uh, what, the, what she, she can do, she can uh, uh, go to waiters uh, and uh, she can pick up a cigar, she can smoke a cigar, she can go to uh, have a glass of wine next to Napoleon, next to George Washington. She can interact with uh, all of these characters. And this is something that is possible just in VR. Uh, and I think it's a great thing because uh, the viewer really has the opportunity to go inside my world, inside my creation. And there is nothing like, uh, like this experience, I have to say. You know, it was, a, it was a dream, like, you know, to go to New York because uh, uh, I wanted to be where all of the, you know, culture they will meet. And of course, New York, uh, our, our scene is supposed to be one of the best ones. And initially I feel, wow, I feel like, I feel like a home, like, you know, because from movies and, and things like this, I thought that I know him very well already. But then when I start to go and ask a work permit, uh, you know, like uh, uh, to be a resident, it become, start, things that start to become very complicated. So I would say that the first five years took me to understand American society. And basically I was just observing. I wasn't showing anything. I was just observing, meeting people, go to see every exhibition that I can. And then step by step, uh, after five years, uh, more or less, uh, I was able to start to exhibit in a small gallery, uh, emerging art scene of Brooklyn. And uh, step by step, like, you know, I was able to go in the Gallery of Manhattan, to do international fair, to do, you know, like uh, all of the things that uh, I was dreaming. But of course, you know, it was not, uh, it was not easy, you know, so, but it was a great uh, adventure and probably the best move I did in my life, you know, so. So, and we're here right now, standing in the middle of the... Times Square. Times Square. Times Square. And I see there is an American dream. What was your American dream? Well, my American dream it was simply to, uh, to become a full-time artist. You know, I come from a completely different background, which is very working class from uh, uh, Bologna. And uh, the idea of just like, uh, be able to be a full-time artist uh, and be able to uh, work uh, without the pain of working, but just simply to work for what I love was an incredible achievement. And I always believed that I could reach that dream, you know. Uh, probably I was also very lucky that I found the right people that they helped me uh, to support uh, this idea and this dream. But uh, at the same time, I feel like, you know, um, you know, I never give up even in the di difficult moments, like, you know, and still today is, uh, I know there is a dream, so I work very hard for make sure that this dream doesn't go away. The Great Farce is the title of uh, a work that basically uh, was the center of the past few years of my 
uh, production. The great farce is American history. You know, that's, that's, that is it's sort of like a, a theatrical act, the way that is narrated. It's like a, a fairy tale. So, and you can see in some of this imagery, like, you know, that is a reenactment of historical uh, event, uh, but somehow everything is happening inside like a, a Colosseum, like a, a circus, like, you know, a Colosseum, you know, it's like a big parade, like, you know, it's like the Macy's parade, you know. I, I love New York because it's where give me the opportunity to do my work. Uh, I'm very grateful, you know, despite all of the madness of American society and all of these uh, things that are happening. But, uh, you know, you have to be grateful of, uh, of be able to do this uh, as a living, as a full time. And my home is there because I have my wife, my kids and, you know, and that's what, what it is, you know.